Hello everyone and welcome to This is Europe, and here's Iceland. Now let's go, shall we? For a long, long time, no one lived in Iceland at all, except for foxes, walruses, and cheerful-faced puffins and so on. Then, one day in the year 874, a Norwegian Viking called Ingolver Arnarsson sailed over and became the first permanent settler of the island. Hundreds of others followed with their families and their Scottish and Irish slaves. They farmed and worshipped the Norse gods like Chris Hemsworth, I mean Thor, and the great Iceland-born explorer Leif Erikson sailed to America centuries before Columbus. Iceland did not become a kingdom, but was rather governed by a number of chieftains who would pass laws and administer justice in councils. The main assembly met annually and was called the Althingi. Is called, I should say, as it still exists as Iceland's parliament, the oldest ongoing parliament in the world. It was the Althingi that decided, around the year 1000, to adopt Christianity after missionaries sent over from Norway had preached the gospel. Accompanying the cross was the pen, and Icelanders began to write, and later composed those wondrous works like Njöl Saga, full of battles, feuds, and vengeance, and the prose Edda, attributed to Snorri Sturluson, which preserved a lot of the marvellous Norse myths for us. Meanwhile, Iceland's chieftains were warring with each other, and only stopped after agreeing to Norwegian rule in the 1260s, which they hoped would bring peace. So Iceland's independence was lost, but it still retained quite a bit of autonomy, including its own code of laws. Iceland built up a notable fishing industry, but the island's geography was worsening. The once abundant birch forests had been cut down, leaving the denuded landscapes we see today. Treeless with spreading soil erosion, Iceland next experienced two bitter bouts of plague that wiped out over half the population in the 1400s. The 1500s found Denmark, which had joined Norway to itself and was now in charge, pushing Lutheranism into Catholic Iceland, a venture that eventually succeeded thanks to a bit of bloodshed. Denmark throttled Iceland's fishing trade, Barbary pirates raided the coasts, taking Icelanders back to North Africa as slaves. An outbreak of smallpox killed a huge portion of the populace, and many others perished of starvation following the ruinous eruption of the volcanic fissure Laki in 1783. Doesn't sound very lucky to me. By the 1800s, Iceland, destitute and depressed from centuries of foreign rule, began contemplating independence, a project championed by Jorn Sigurdsson. The goal wasn't achieved, but Iceland did gain concessions in self-governance, which was a step in the right direction. After gaining home rule in 1904, Iceland took big strides towards betterment. Modernity marched in, education increased, women gained more rights, things were looking well. It seemed all Iceland had needed was a bit of freedom. It achieved full independence at long last in 1944, and Svein Björnsson became first president. You'd think he'd be a bit happier. Come on Svein, give us a smile. That's better. Iceland's fisheries flourished, and the country made good use of United States Marshall Plan assistance. And in 1955, Icelandic writer Halder Laxness won the Nobel Prize in Literature. There was also a time of regional aquatic conflict with the UK, in what's called the the Cod Wars, all of which Iceland won, maintaining and expanding its fishing zones. As the years passed, Iceland's prosperity intensified, until 2008, when financial crisis struck and hit the country very hard. So hard it even forced the country's three McDonald's restaurants to close down. But the Icelanders preferred the burgers at Hamburgerabulen anyway, which is a much catchier name. The economy began to recover under Prime Minister Johanna Sigurdadotti. Iceland today may as well be called Niceland, not only possessing a very high level of human development, but also the honour of being the safest country in the world to live in, with very few social problems and an exceedingly small amount of crime. You probably wouldn't want to mess with an Icelander though, as the country has won an astonishing nine titles in the world's strongest man competition, second only to the United States, which has over 300 million more people than it. So that's it for Iceland, and that's all from me for now. Bye bye. <laughs>